Hello, Jason. Very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. This is kind of exciting. It's very exciting. And this is a story that you've written. So um, how did you come up doing an origin story for Peter Pan? I always loved the Peter Pan mythology. I got stuck on a Peter Pan ride when I was nine years old with my dad. And I was sort of flying in that miniature pirate ship over London and thought, I wonder how he got to Neverland and why he and Hook don't get along and how he learned to fly. And it's very bizarre that 20 years later, we're sitting here in Leicester Square with all this. It's very, very surreal. Did you find it quite liberating having an origin story to work with or, or were there restrictions on you to do that? No, I, I, doing an origin story is great because everyone knows these characters, everyone knows where they end up and you suddenly get to put all that in a different context, in a different light. So it's very liberating because there is nothing written about where Peter Pan comes from and why Hook is who he is. So it's a great opportunity to sort of build something fresh with characters and a world and themes that everyone has been in love with for so long that I was in love with from a very young age. How long did it take you to write the script? Uh, I wrote the script, so I started writing this in the summer of 2013, and we had to move very quickly because there were a lot of competing Peter Pan projects. So I wrote it in about 10 weeks, handed it into the studio, prayed they would like it. They did, and Joe Wright was on board maybe a month after that, and all of a sudden Hugh Jackman was starring in it, and we were making it. Now that's a very quick time to write it, and this also... This is very unusual for the Hollywood project. This is the fastest I think anything I work on is ever going to go from script to screen because I sold it at the beginning of the summer of 2013 and we were in production by April of 2014. So I, it was very, very thrilling. How, how do you think you'll cope with something that takes a little bit longer than in future? I think I'm going to be intolerable. I think I've totally been spoiled by this process and working with a director like Joe and actors like Hugh and Rooney and Garrett and Levi, uh, you get very spoiled. I don't know that anything will quite live up to the amazing experience that this has been. So I'm, I'm spoiled rotten for life because of this. Now you've got a relative newcomer uh, in Levi playing the main role. Uh, do you think it had to be someone like that in that role? I think that finding Peter Pan was less about a known person or an unknown person, just finding the right actor. And at that age, it's very difficult to find an actor who can carry a film and go through a real emotional arc. Uh, and Levi just blew everyone else away. I mean, I, I, we looked at so many tapes, so many people auditioned, we did a sort of worldwide casting search, and Levi was just special. Joe likes to say that uh, the light in his eyes comes directly from the light in his heart, and I think that's a thousand percent true. He's a very, very special young man, and a gifted actor for uh, a person at any age. Uh, and he really carries this movie on his shoulders, I think people are going to say. Levi, I think, is someone we're going to be seeing in films for a very, very long time to come. The film itself. And he's super nice, too. Well, I hope so. He's We're going to meet him soon. You're going to meet him. He's a movie star. He should have a little bit of an attitude by now. He's the nicest, sweetest, most humble kid. Well, you, well, you don't have an attitude. You've just written a big, massive blockbuster. No, no, I'm pretending. I'm I'm <laughs> complete, I'm awful. I'm just holding it all together for the purpose of this interview. Now, the film is a visual feast. Um, it really is. Uh, yeah, and I was wondering, was there anything in particular that impressed you with what was brought up on screen? Uh, I was blown away by the visual touches that Joe added that were not in the script. You know, the script... I had always written the orphanage scene where kids were being stolen out of their beds and I thought that would be really cool and visually kind of stunning. And Joe came in and said, what if the pirates were bungeeing through the sky, like grabbing these kids and hoisting them into the sky? I thought, oh, well, that's way better than anything I could have thought up. And he Joe tends to do that. He comes in and has these ideas that are just mind-blowing and slightly left of center that you don't see coming. That's one example. I think the way he envisioned the Neverbird chase is another really good example. We have this awesome scene where, have you seen the film? I have indeed, yes. So the Neverbird scene where the Neverbirds are chasing Peter and Smee and Hook was written sort of as a, a straight chase scene. Joe came in and thought, what if there were these auroras, these psychedelic light waves that move through the Neverwood, and what if we have Peter and Hook and Smee running through those? Which just elevates it to a very different place. Whose idea was it to use Nirvana in the film? That was Joe. That actually came out of rehearsals. That was very much, we all showed up one day to set and Joe said, you know, I had this idea and we're going to put it in the movie and they're going to sing, they're going to sing a Nirvana song, Smells Like Teen Spirit. And everyone sort of went, wait, what? How is, is that really going to work? And then they showed it to us and everyone, me in the studio, all went, oh, that's awesome. But it's, I think what Joe understood about Neverland is that it is a world very much of the imagination where anything is possible. And so you have license to have a Nirvana song. You have license to have things that feel incongruous and like they won't fit. And yet, when you see the movie, it all feels like this very real place drawn directly out of someone's very vivid, very wild imagination. Now, for future films, would you look to do another origin story or looking for something completely original next? Uh, I, I would absolutely do another origin story. I just, I have to write things that I'm passionate about, and this was a story I was deeply passionate about. So whatever I do next, I'd like it to be something that I have the same attachment to. But uh, having worked with Joe and this gang, it's a very tall order to fill for whoever the folks I'm working next with are, <laughs> that's for sure. They've set, they've set the bar very high. 
Uh, and finally, obviously, yeah. a close attachment with everyone involved in this film, which means there's potential for more in the series. Would you be interested in doing more? Have you got anything in mind in particular? You know, I think we have to see how people respond to this first one. Uh, and if people react well, then I'd love to go back. I think that they're, the film, without giving away too much of how the film ends to folks who haven't seen it, I think it leaves a lot of the story between the end of our film and Jay Barry's original book, Untold. And so those are blanks that I, as a writer, would love to imagine and fill in, and I hope that audiences feel the same way. Excellent. Well, I hope so as well. Thank you very much. Cheers, man. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey you guys, huh? Hey you guys, is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey you guys!